Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of OVW Mania here on Triple Threat Talk. I am Brian Cannon. Now I'm going to be trying something new this week. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to try to be ahead of where we usually are. And what I mean is usually by the time you all see this on Triple Threat Talk, I'm talking about the previous episode of OVW TV, which happened you know, a good 7, 8, 9, 10 days um, previous uh, to when you're watching this. So I'm actually, even though I meant to do this last night, uh, this segment, I I'm actually doing this after the September 11th edition of OVW TV. So that means I'm going to be going over this week. It's going to be a, a long segment, so I'm going to try to hurry up and uh, get through everything without taking too much time up. But I'm going to be talking about episode 733 from last Wednesday, September 4th. I'm going to be talking about the Saturday Night Special on September 7th. And tonight's newest OVW TV, which was September 11th. So, uh, let's just jump right into it and get going here. First of all, OVW TV number 733, last Wednesday, September 4th at the Davis Arena. The first thing that happened uh, was another encounter between Jamin Olivenzi and Jay Bradley. Their final encounter before the Saturday Night Special. They even had the... Uh, Boomstick on the pole set up in the ring to kind of give fans a preview of what uh, what would happen at SNS. Uh, Jamin tried to get, retrieve the boomstick but couldn't. And uh, he was going to hit Jay with the title, but the referees tried to stop him. While he was distracted by the refs trying to stop him, it allowed Jay Bradley to uh, then hit Jamin with the boomstick and uh, lay him out before the Saturday night special. Backstage, Timmy Danger was upset because he wanted to team with Eddie Diamond once again, but Eddie said, man, you're just too injured. He goes, you know, I, I still want you in my corner, but you need to you need to rest up. And Eddie Diamond is now going to be teaming with Paradise. Also in the back, the body guy was saved by an important phone call as he was about to get taken out once again by the assassin. Body guy then called for uh, Melvin, talking about poor and Mr. Marvelous Melvin Maximus, and Melvin pokes his head out where he was hiding behind a giant fan. Uh, a young gun triple threat match. Dylan Bostic defeats Evan Markopoulos and Aaron Sky. Flash defended the television title successfully once again against Rockstar Spud thanks to interference from the Marauders and the use of the Kendo stick. The no disqualification match uh, between Tony Gunn and Randy Royal had to be put off. Uh, Chris Sharp told Tony Gunn that Randy Royal was admitted to the hospital with heart problems once again and therefore uh, wasn't at the arena for the match. The new pairing of Eddie Diamond and Paradise defeated the Mobile Homers. Lady Tapa laid out Ray Lynn uh, and then c continued to beat down on her until Trina came out to make the save. However, after she did that, she then grabbed a microphone and surprised a lot of people by saying she's got a knee injury that's going to require surgery and had to vacate the women's title. The final uh, event of the night, the four Nightmare Cup teams were brought out. Uh, Rob, Terry, Marcus Anthony, Joe Coleman, and Shiloh Jones of the Marauders, the OVW Tag Team Champions, uh, Muhammad Ali Vaez and Michael Hayes, and the best team ever, Rudy Switchblade and Jesse Goddard. Shannon the Dude, uh, who is the current ring announcer for Ohio Valley Wrestling, was going to do a drawing, uh, but no, every, all the teams started arguing. Uh, Shiloh said that it's uh, going to be rigged. He, kn he knows how these things work, and it's going to be rigged against them. So what ends up happening, Chris Sharp is sent out uh, by Danny Davis to say since they can't do the drawing and nobody can get along, what they're going to do is have a fatal four-way match right then and there, and the winning team would then get to choose which team they wanted to face at the Saturday Night Special, and then the other two teams left would face off. So in this fatal four-way tag match, uh, the team of Rob Terry and Marcus Anthony get the win, and Marcus Anthony says they uh, want to go straight for the champions, Ali and Hayes, at SNS. So that was one semifinal match, and the second semifinal match for Saturday Night Special uh, left the best team ever to take on the Marauders. So heading right on into Saturday Night Special, here's a quick rundown of what happened there. Uh, the new pairing of Eddie Diamond and Paradise uh, was doing really well against the VIP club. Looked like they had the match won. And Timmy Danger came out and pulled uh, referee Josh Ashcraft out of the ring. Uh, then James Moose Thomas, his music hits, and everybody goes crazy uh, because he's returning. But he comes in and he demolishes both Diamond and Paradise uh, and aligns himself with Timmy Danger. Dylan Bostic beat Rockstar Spud. 
the Marauders, Flash Flanagan, Raul Lamada, and the wannabe Marauder, Nick Dumeyer, uh, get a six-man tag victory over the body guy for him and Clint Poe. Uh, Evan Markopoulos beats Aaron Sky. Uh, the first semifinal match in the Nightmare Cup tournament, the best team ever, defeats the Marauders, Joe Coleman and Shiloh Jones. The second semifinal match, the impressive combination of Rob Terry and Marcus Anthony, who are going by the tag team name of the Furions, uh, defeat the tag team champions Ali and Hayes. A Beach Bunny Bikini Battle Royal, uh, Lady Tapa gets the win, defeating the Blossoms, Taylor Hendricks, Lovely Lala, Jesse Bell, and Ray Lynn. Uh, in the finals of the Nightmare Cup tournament, the Furions, Rob Terry and Marcus Anthony, defeat the best team ever. So they get a trophy, the $5,000 prize, and a future tag team title shot. And here they've now beat, in this past past week that I just went over, Ollie and Hayes twice. So could the third time be the charm? Could there be new tag team champions? We'll have to wait and see. I'll actually be going over the next episode in a minute. and There's kind of a, a little bit shaken up there. Uh, the final match of the evening at SNS, Jamin Olivencia gets the loaded boomstick and is able to take out Jay Bradley and is still your OVW heavyweight champion. So, this set up a lot of things for episode 734, which I'll be going over in just a moment. Uh, there was a huge return and a new television champion, a major announcement about the future of the vacated women's title. We do have the no disqualification street fight between Tony Gunn and Randy Royal. Moose explains his actions, plus much, much more. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, I've got a couple more things to go over, including episode 734, which was just filmed tonight on September 11th. Here we are. Okay, so for the latest episode on uh, September 11th, which is episode number 734, uh, the first thing we see is uh, Tony Gunn and Randy Royal in Danny Davis's office. Uh, Tony Gunn said he looked in every hospital, couldn't find Randy anywhere, and Danny Davis tells Randy that he either fights tonight or he's fired, and he tells Tony that's the best he can do. Uh, the first match of the evening, Muhammad Ali Vaez and Michael Hayes, your tag team champions, defeat the Mobile Homers. Uh, then they grab the mics afterwards, say they wanted to win the $5,000 in the trophy. It would have been super nice, but they are still the champions, and they're willing to defend against uh, anyone and everyone, pretty much. Marcus Anthony comes out by himself. He says that uh, Rob Terry is ha having some visa problems. He says that he won't uh, be facing them at the next Saturday night special. But then he turns his attention to Jay Bradley and tells Jay that he hasn't forgot about their unfinished business and retreats to the back. Then the best team ever comes out uh, and says that the only reason Hayes and Ali are still the champions is because they have yet to face the best team ever. And then the Marauders come out and say, basically say that the whole Nightmare Cup tournament was a conspiracy, that uh, referee Josh Ashcraft was a puppet of both the Furions and the higher-ups in OVW. And then Ali and Hayes say, look, you, uh, we're defending champions. Why don't the two, you two teams, the best team ever, and the Marauders fight next week on TV? And the winning team can then face us at the next Saturday Night Special for the tag team titles. Uh, the next match of the evening was the big surprise. The Marauders stayed in the ring for Flash to defend the OVW television title. And his opponent was the returning former WWE and TNA superstar and OVW alumni, the Pope. Uh, he was called D'Angelo De Niro on TNA, but going back by Elijah Burke, the Pope Elijah Burke, picks up the victory over Flash Flanagan in his first, first night back and is your new OVW television champion. The Marauders tried to interfere, and the wannabe Marauder, Nick Dumeyer, uh, basically cost Flash the opportunity to cheat. And, and try to pick up a win like he's been doing for the past several weeks. Uh, he tried to throw uh, Flash the kendo stick and accidentally threw it 
over his head and out out the other side of the ring, uh, which allowed Elijah to capitalize and hit uh, a code breaker like maneuver uh, to pick up the victory. And he is your new TV champion. Uh, so so glad to see Elijah back. I think he's one of the 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 talents that again both WWE and TNA uh, wasn't used correctly and could have been a much bigger star. I still hope that he has a chance to go back to either of those places and, and, and rise once again. But, uh, I'll, I'll take him for now in OVW and, um, the, the fans, me especially was, was all chanting welcome back and, uh, Pope, Pope, Pope all during his match. So, um, he, he looked like he was really taking it all into after he, uh, won the match with the title in the middle of the ring. So, um, after that, we are backstage once again. Uh, Jay Bradley's walking around, looking out the window, and Body Guy and 4M pop up behind a big screen TV. They're once again hiding from the man in the mask, talking about the assassin, and they tell Jay that if they see him, to make sure they let let them know. Uh, Eddie Diamond and Paradise are then seen talking about um, Moose attacking them at SNS, and uh, they've got a match coming up next. Uh, Moose. Basically annihilates Eddie Diamond, um, hits him with the moose kick, but keeps wailing away on him after he's been knocked out. So the referee um, is forced to call for the bell, which I think disqualified Moose, but Moose still came out the winner. Uh, Paradise had to come out and make the save to keep Moose, um, yeah, to keep Moose from uh, banging on uh, Eddie Diamond anymore. Uh, they they're gonna have a match next week. Moose grabs a mic and says everybody wants to know why he did what he did. He said that he's loyal to the building, he's loyal to the people, and he's loyal to his friends, talking about Timmy Danger. Uh, and that's why he's aligned with Timmy Danger, and that's why, I, I guess, he attacked them, because they feel Eddie Diamond turned their back on them. Um, so I guess that, that, that's how that's going. Um, in the back, once again, the mobile homers are, are down on their luck. Adam says... You know, by them losing to the champions, they're going to be fall all the way back to the bottom and have going to have to work their way up again. Um, Ted McNaylor is still playing lottery tickets and and hoping that'll change their luck. We then see uh, Evan Markopoulos walk by Dylan Bostic and uh, they kind of have a little confrontation. And uh, he, Evan tells Dylan to remember that he didn't beat him. He was he pinned Aaron Sky. Not only was he the one that pinned Aaron Sky, but he used a handful of tights to do it. And uh, Dylan basically tells Evan um, that they're gonna have a have a match next week, and they'll, you know, they, they can prove who's better. Uh, a big announcement regarding the OVW Women's Title was next. Gilbert Corsi gets in the ring and brings out uh, four uh, four ladies. They were the final four in the Bikini Battle Royal. The winner, Lady Tapa, and the last three that were eliminated, both Blossoms and Taylor Hendricks. And he tells the four of them that uh, for the first time in uh, wrestling history, there will be a four-way ladder match for the vacated OVW Women's title. That'll be on next week's show. Um, that's going to be pretty impressive. Uh, another interview backstage, uh, ring announcer Shannon the Dude talks to Jamin Olivencia. Jamin says that he uh, boomstick Jay Bradley, got the win. And he said the world's not ready for Jamin Olivencia. He's ready for the world. And then in the final match of the evening, it was Tony Gunn finally getting some retribution and defeating Randy Royal after uh, superplexing him off the top rope through a table to get the victory. Don't forget for all the details, for all the other dark matches, for all that good stuff, any other breaking news information, you can go to ovwmania.blogspot.com. And uh, I hope next time I don't go as long, and I hope I hope this works out better where we're talking about the most recent OVW, and I don't feel like I'm, what, by the time the newest Triple Threat talk comes out, that I'm like 7 to 10 days in the past. So, um, don't forget about that. Thanks to Triple Threat Talk for having me on each and every week. Big thanks also, of course, to Terry Bodie and referee Chris Sharp, who retweet and share all my stuff. Don't forget Chris Sharp has his cool wrestling podcast. Um, there's several of them you can listen to now. He said that he's got a new season of them that'll be coming out soon where I think he's going to be talking to Ted McNaylor, the body guy, um, maybe Alex Silva, uh, who's not in OVW anymore, but 
uh, still a good friend of Chris Sharp, so uh, it'll be interesting to hear from him. And uh, I think that about does it. So I will talk to you all again next week. Have a great week, and back to the guys in the studio.